Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to work on the Jimmy DeResta bandsaw. We had to take a little break from this, but we are back on it again. And uh, we are ready to go ahead and start the process of getting this thing finally painted to the final color that it's going to be. But before we do, we do have a little bit more prep work to do. So the delay in this really revolved around when we added on a couple of pieces, uh, required putting some more filler back in there because we hadn't done that on these pieces. I just did it off camera guys. And a lot of it was actually done by my helper who has been uh, where he hasn't been able to get out here to work much in the shop the last couple of weeks because of some school responsibilities, some family responsibilities, et cetera. So it has kind of gotten a little on the, uh, little delayed and everything, but we are finally back there. He's got everything back sanded out. We've got everything primed again and it is ready to go. As long as we were having to do a little bit of body work on a couple of these things, I did make the decision to go ahead and just touch up a few more places on the whole casting which probably delayed things a little bit more. Did it need it? Probably not, but it does look a little bit better. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the results. But bottom line is guys, we are ready to go ahead and get this thing painted up. But before we start painting, there is a few more prep things to do. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start on that first. And uh, then we're gonna get the paint out and get some color on this. Let's get it done. So first thing I want to do here is I've got a bunch of holes in here and I know I've got a little bit of body filler kind of in some of these. So I'm going to just take a tap and run up in these, make sure everything's cleaned out good. And I really want to do this before we paint just so we don't scratch any paint or anything when we do it later on. Uh, these are already tapped. I'm just chasing the threads that are in there and uh, you can feel it. I mean, it's finally, there it is through right there, but uh, that made a big difference. Uh, make things going back together a lot easier later on. So let's uh, get that one done and then we'll get these other ones. This one is a five eighths, these are three eighths. And same thing here, we'll just come in with a tap. Let's see. And make sure we got it nice thread in there. And I'm going to go around to all the holes on this saw and uh, basically do the same thing. This is a ratcheting uh, wrench here. So I got to flip a little lever depending on which way I'm turning it. Really nice for when you're up in a corner. Not so handy on what I'm doing right here, but it'll work. Let's do this one. This one's got a good bit of filler in it, but tap should cut through it and yeah we're into the threads in there now and they're pulling a bunch of just junk out of these uh holes which is good we want to get it out of there flip that ratchet again all right i'm gonna do the other ones and uh we'll have that checked off the list so another thing I'm doing is just cleaning up these holes. Uh, again, there was just some body filler that had got down in them. This is one here. I've already done those. Those were one inch. This one's a three quarter inch hole. Just want to clean that body filler out of there. There we go. And I also hit these with a the countersink just to open up the tops. So those look a lot better. So my next uh, thing I need to do is up in this area, this is all primed out. And uh, this was done when we had the, the casting sandblasted. They primed it over at the uh, place that did the sandblasting. And I just told them to do the whole thing. But this area actually has a, a piece that slides up and down in here. So because of that, we need to kind of get in here with a wire wheel and get this primer out, particularly on this inside part, because that's where a piece slides up and down. There's some brackets that clamp down here. This probably isn't as important, but in here we need to get that nice and slick and clean. No primer on it, down to bare metal. Wire wheel, angle grinder, grunt work. Let's get it done. We're 
pretty much through with the angle grinder. And what I'm doing now is just coming here with some sandpaper and just making sure we got some nice uh, smooth waves in here for that to travel up and down. I've already hit it with it pretty good, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I think that'll slide in there just fine like that is. And uh, yeah, looks good. I think we're about ready to paint. I'm going to take my air hose and blow this thing off. I've created a lot of dust on it while it's a little bit of work and I'm doing. And uh, once I get it blown off, we'll come in here, wipe the whole thing down with uh, a rag and mineral spirits, pick up any other trash on there, and we'll be ready for some paint. I like to start at the top and work my way down. That way, if there's any loose material up here that I knock loose, I'll be able to wipe it down as we go down the machine. And there's a lot of dust and stuff from all this uh, grinding and everything that I just did up here. So we want to get all that out. The air blew a good bit of it off, but didn't get it all. I can pretty well see what we need to do here. So, all right, we'll just get in here and work our way down. All right, I think we got it wiped down. I'm going to give that a a little bit of time to just kind of dry real good and we'll get in here and start painting. All right, I think we are ready to paint and uh, I know this is gonna probably drive some people crazy, but we're gonna paint it with a paintbrush. I'm not gonna try to spray this on. Why? Uh, it's personal preference. That's the bottom line. I've done a lot of these machines. I paint with a paintbrush, I get good results. It allows me to get the paint on a little thicker and uh, eat more evenly. It allows me to kind of get up into some places where I can't really get with a sprayer and mainly just get a nice thick coat of paint on here. Um, and you got to keep in mind, guys, that back in the day when uh, these machines were being built, they were all painted with paintbrushes. So that's part of my reason too. I've restored a lot of these old machines and when I go in there and start looking at them, if you got good paint on some of these old machines, very often you can still see just the remnants of brush strokes in there. It's historically the way that this machine would have been done back in the day. I tried to do a rest restoration that is historically accurate and uh, therefore I use a brush. So um, as for color, uh, Jimmy and I talked about this. I know that this machine was kind of painted a green color uh, when it was uh, when we got it. And I know a lot of people were wanting us to go with that green color, but at the end of the day, it was what Jimmy wanted and he wanted it to be painted black, which is a very appropriate color for this machine. I would say that the majority of machines that were built in the 1890s like this one was, they were painted black. And uh, that's what we're going back with. I'm using a uh, Rust-Oleum uh, enamel here. Um, Again, it's not a show car. This Rust-Oleum paint, I've had a lot of good luck with over the years. And uh, there's a lot of machines in my shop that have been painted with uh, Rust-Oleum black, just like we're doing. I'm using a semi-gloss. Uh, I don't really like using a gloss on, uh, on castings uh, just because the gloss will really show uh, those any imperfections in the castings. And while we did do some body filling on this to kind of smooth it out, it's still got some casting defects in it. Again, that's the way it would have come from the factory. So uh, uh, I like using a semi-gloss. You still get a little bit of a gloss to it, but it just kind of hides some of that uh, defect. A lot of people, when they're painting old machines like this, prefer to use a flat black. And sometimes I have done that as well. Uh, I prefer the semi-gloss though, and that's what I'm going with here. And I got a hair off of my paintbrush. Uh, aggravating cuss. We'll 
clean that up here in just a minute. Get out of there. There we go. I will probably come back and put a second coat on this after this dries. In fact, not probably, I will. It just makes for a good look. Now, as far as brush marks go, the nice thing about this paint is, is it is somewhat self-leveling. Uh, it will, over time, as it's drying, it will kind of smooth itself out. And you won't see a lot of those brush marks in there like you do when you first lay it on. So anyway, I'm not gonna make you guys watch me paint this whole machine, but uh, we're doing it. Black it is, black is beautiful. Well, there we go, first coat of paint is on. We're gonna let that cure probably overnight. Uh, I may come out here and do just a little touch up sanding in a few places where I see some little issues and then we'll uh, put a second coat on there. But uh, moving right along, uh, looks pretty good. Again, I really like putting that coat of paint on with the brush. You get a nice thick coat with this enamel paint. Uh, you want to have a nice thick coat. Uh, one thing about enamel is, is that it it's slow to cure. Uh, it really can take up to a couple of weeks to, I mean, it'll be hard, it'll be, it'll be, you know, you can touch it within a few hours, but it really takes a couple of weeks for it to get really good and hard. Uh, but once it does, it makes a really durable finish. And I really like using the enamels uh, on this machinery. But uh, anyway, we're gonna let that coat dry and come back, put on a second coat. We'll bring you back a little bit later. Well, I think we've got this thing pretty well painted. I've got a couple of coats of paint on here now. Pretty much spent my Saturday in the shop painting, which is not a chore that I enjoy at all. In fact, painting is probably one of my least favorite things in the world to do, but you gotta do it. So we got it knocked out. Um, like I said, I like the way this looks. I think everything looks good. Uh, I did come in here and do just a little touch up in a couple areas after it had kind of dried a little bit. I had a couple areas that I was not real happy with. So I did a little bit of sanding and then came back and put another coat on there. But uh, I am happy with how this uh, looks at this point in time. So uh, moving on next, uh, we're gonna start getting some other pieces put back on here and really kind of start getting this thing back together. And while I was painting, and because I was painting, I was trying real hard not to be doing a lot of stuff in the shop that could create dust or create something that could get mess with these paint jobs. So didn't really get any machining or anything done this weekend, but I did get some more paint related stuff done. And uh, even though it's not related to the, the rest of the bandsaw, I'm gonna show you some of the other stuff we did some painting on because hey, you know, why not? It's painting Saturday. Uh, let's show you what that looks like. So this is my horizontal boring mill. And if you've watched the channel, uh, you've seen me do some work on this recently. And uh, we just recently got the table off of it. I got all the lead screws and stuff that were kind of down in this area off. And uh, we got all this area cleaned up and I got it painted this weekend as well. This machine is one that I've been working on for a while. Actually, we did a lot of cleanup on it a couple of years ago and it's just kind of been sitting, waiting for me to finish some things up on it. And I've been kind of getting back on it because I've got a job coming up actually related to the Jimmy Duresta bandsaw that we're going to be using this on coming up here before too much longer. And uh, anyway, we got this whole center section all cleaned up and painted. Uh, my boy that helps me, Brock, came in and he got in here with the wire wheel, got all that cleaned out real good this past week. So uh, I went ahead and got paint in there and it is curing and drying. He's still got some work to do on this head and on the upper part of the arm here to uh, get it prepped and ready for paint. But uh, we're moving in that direction on that as well. And uh, hopefully we'll get that stuff uh, painted up here before long. Uh, Cause like I said, we, I'm, I'm gonna need this machine real soon. So uh, it's kind of become a priority to get some of these uh, things knocked out on it. But I thought I'd show that while we're painting, we're gonna get stuff squared away and knocked out. Also, miscellaneous parts that go on the bandsaw. I've uh, been getting these things painted up as well. So I've had them over here in a separate area, but I uh, got all some paint on these so that we can start reassembling some stuff here pretty soon. So paint, paint, paint. Well, there you go. That is going to be a wrap. Uh, 
like I said, we got some stuff knocked out here, ready to move forward and can now hopefully start seeing this thing really start coming back together and getting pieces on here, making it look more like the bandsaw. So uh, still a lot of work to do, but uh, we are definitely uh, got the base now that we can start building this machine back. So we're kind of getting into the, away from the phases of just tearing stuff down and making parts to really kind of starting putting things back together. And uh, then we still got some stuff that we got to make and do and fix, but uh, moving forward on the Jimmy the Rest of Bandsaw project. With that guys, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up. Really appreciate those. The comments down below, really appreciate those as well. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications of when new videos are posted. Big, big, big thank you to all my Patreon supporters out there who help support the site financially because we couldn't make these videos uh, without all your help. And uh, with that, guys, we will sign off and we will catch you on the next video. And again, thanks for watching.